Recording of PPD and CVM Clinical Scenario Before we see how to record PPD and CVM, you need to know the instrument that is used for measuring these parameters, namely the periodontal probe. The periodontal probe that you are using is Williams Periodontal Probe. Williams Probe is calibrated in millimeters from 1 to 10. So the maximum pocket depth that can be measured using this probe in 10 mm. The unique feature of this probe is that the 4th and the 6th marking are missing. The first band corresponds to 4 mm and the second band corresponds to 6 mm. The marking below the first band is 3 mm, between the two bands is 5 mm and the one above the second band is 7 mm. This is for easy measurement of PPD and CAL and for easy identification of the marking when you are measuring PPD and CAL. Now imagine if the probe is calibrated in all markings without the band. When you insert the probe into the pocket, you will have to count in reverse from 10 and identify the marking. For example, imagine this case. It is very difficult to identify which marking lies against the margin. So, we have to count in reverse from the 10th marking. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. The third marking is visible. So, the margin lies against the second marking. Hence, PPD is 2 mm. This method is very time consuming, confusing and not practical. Now, if there is an identification or indication to identify markings, as in this case the presence of bands, it will be easier to measure the value. Here, when the probe is inserted, the marking below the first band is visible, which is 3 mm. This indicates that the marginal gingiva lies against the second marking, which is 2 mm, and hence the pocket depth is 2 mm. Look at this example. When the probe is inserted into the pocket, the second band is completely visible and the fifth marking between the band is also visible, which means the marginal gingiva is halfway in the first band. So this gives a pocket depth of 4 mm. Let's take a look at another example. Here when the probe is inserted, the entire first band is into the pocket. The second band is visible. Hence, the marking below the second band, which is the fifth marking, is at the margin. So, the fifth marking lies against the margin. And hence, PPD is 5 mm. Now, let's see how to record clinical attachment level or loss. As we have seen earlier, two measurements are needed to calculate CA, PPD and the distance from CEJ to margin. In this case, let's measure the CAL in 3-2. It is evident that the teeth has recession. The marginal gingiva is apical to CEG and hence CAL is obtained by adding both the values. So let's first measure PPD. When the probe is inserted, the marginal gingiva lies against the first marking. Hence PPD is 1 mm. Now we have to measure the distance between CEJ to margin. Here the CEJ is clinically visible and the CEJ lies at the 7th marking. Hence this distance is 7 mm. So, CAL is 1 mm plus 7 mm, which is 8 mm. In this example, gingival enlargement is evident in all the lower anterior teeth, which means the marginal gingiva is coronal to CEG. And hence, CAL is obtained by subtracting both the values. Here, in an attempt to measure PPD, when the probe is inserted into the pocket, the entire probe is inside the pocket except for the last, that is the 10th marking. And the marginal gingiva hence lies against the 9th marking. So, PPD is 9 mm. Here, the CEJ has to be identified by tactile signs. The entire first band is invisible and the second band is visible. So, the margin lies against the 5th marking. So, the distance from CEJ to the margin in this case is 5 mm. So, CAL is 9 mm minus 5 mm, 4 mm. Now, let's measure CAL in healthy gingiva where the attachment is at CEJ and margin is 1 mm coronal to CEJ. Here, PPD is 2 mm as the margin lies against the second band. Since the attachment is at CEJ, the distance from margin to CEJ is also 2 mm. So, CAL is 2 mm minus 2 mm which is 0 mm. There is no attachment loss. Finally, in this case, the margins are at the level of CEJ and the attachment is apical to CEJ. 
This situation can be identified clinically by presence of pockets without recession. In such cases, CAL will be equal to PPD. Here, the PPD is 5 mm. Since the entire second band is visible, and so the margin will be against the the, uh, the margin will be against the fifth marking. Since PPD and CAL are of the same value, CAL is also 5 mm. To summarize the recording of CAL, in case of recession, CAL is equal to PPD plus the distance from CEJ to margin. In case of gingival enlargement, CAL is equal to PPD minus the distance from CEJ to margin. When the gingiva is normal or healthy, where the attachment is at CEJ and margins are 1 mm coronal to CEJ, CAL is equal to 0. And finally, when there is pocket and no recession is evident, CAL is equal to PPD. Thank you.